So the theme is health and wealth equals life. The theme is a little bit different here tonight because I want to combine two things. And, uh, you know, when we look at life, life is really one big story. Uh, it is the story of our lives, be they short, be they long, be they difficult, be they easy. Um, uh, our life is full of experiences and we experience uh, all sorts of things. We see things, we hear things that we remember, we feel things, we have uh, touched things, we have uh, got experience from smelling, hearing, and seeing. And the whole of life is really a story, and the Bema is really no different. And uh, I'm 13 years involved in this story. And, you know, many stories that we tell each other are either epic stories, uh, in a way, an ordinary story doesn't exist because every story is extraordinary. Sometimes they're sad, sometimes they're full of joy. But I think stories are always exciting. And so, um, in a way, I want to talk to you about how you can live, make your own life a bit more exciting, more significant. And that is where this equation comes from, that... Um, to really experience life fully, we've got to have our health. It's a precondition. And by wealth, I don't even mean money. I mean the things that are dear to you, things that are meaningful for you, things that you dream about, that you're passionate about, things that really get you going uh, in a positive sense. But the two biggest problems that I see in my 63 years that people face is the first one is how to avoid being broke at the end of every month. And another one is how the heck do we maintain our fitness, vitality, our mental and physical performance at any age? It's obviously easier when you're 20 and you're full of energy and you get on the bike and you row and you go to Virgin Active and I don't know what all. Um, but as you get older, uh, not just because you get older, but because you have more responsibilities, more stress and strain, and it's exactly then that we need more um, and better health. How do we get this? And our health is really our greatest asset because without it, we can't really do anything. And wealth is what we leave behind. The memories we leave behind, the stories we leave behind, and that's what I call legacy. So together, health and wealth ensure our personal freedom, our joy, our peace of mind, and in a way, our quality of life. And note here that by wealth, I really don't mean stinking rich in terms of money and possessions. I mean values, anything that you value. Now, if you have a bit of money, or, or anything, actually time possibly, what could you, how could you invest, or whatever you have, where should you invest it? And I think it sounds maybe very selfish to say you should invest in yourself, because again, if you are not the catalyst, if you are not the leader, if you are not the one who drives and promotes, uh, who's going to do it? But to do these things, you need health, and you really need a good disposition. And by disposition, I mean um, that you're positive in your mind, that you want to achieve things, that you're passionate about something, and that you live out your dreams. Now, to become a successful BIMA business partner would be one way to combine the two. I think it's the best way. Um, and I certainly should know, because I started off also as a BBP in a way, uh, hesitant as I was at the time, I had an extremely good income by working for myself, uh, working mainly overseas in Europe and the United States. I enjoyed what I was doing. It was relatively easy and stress-free for me. Yes, it has its own problems and its ups and downs. But then I discovered um, what the earning potential is uh, in the Bema business and also how you can actually live out your dream there too. The dream of maybe helping others, doing something significant, having purpose in your life. 
<clears throat> now that people always say, you know, when you start a business, we need capital. I can tell you what the sort of capital is that you need, especially for BBP. The capital you require is a willingness to do what? A willingness to start, a willingness to learn, a willingness to do something. You've got to have some ability, of course, but ability can be learned. We're not talking talent here, which is God-given, but we're talking of competencies. Ability means the factual knowledge, the experiential knowledge, and also the skills that go together with something. And of course, when you start your own business, you always need a bit of courage. The money isn't the big thing. The courage is the big hurdle, or the lack of it, rather. And then I would say another thing that you require to start your own business is personal integrity. And the personal integrity is important because you've got to be honest with yourself, your own weaknesses and strengths, but you've also got to be honest with your suppliers, with your employees, or your downline in the case of um, Beamer Business Partners, and of course with your, um, with your customers. So you can see in these four words that there is no monetary capital required here, in this case, to start a business. But it's all a matter of mindset. Now, a prerequisite for the journey to become a successful BBP is really a bit like you're going on a journey. You need a driver, you need a vehicle, you need some fuel, and you need a reason to go. And I would say if you have the right mindset and you are in the health business, and you collect knowledge and information and you educate yourself on the market that you will be in and the product and what it really can do. And then if you plan your business well, you don't have to conquer the world in the first week. But if you plan what you're going to do next week and the month after and the year after, and you do that with some passion because you want to uh, really make a, a difference, then I think you're well set on the way. And of course, we all have dreams. You know, as I said, I'm about 538,000 hours on this planet, and I still have dreams. In fact, some of you might know that uh, at the age of 62, at the beginning of this year, I started gyrocopter flying, which was a passion of mine. I always wanted to do that. And it took me all these years to, to fulfill this dream. And we all have a dream. But to, to accomplish that dream, you have to have a plan, and then you've got to do it. And that is extremely important because many people have dreams. Everybody has dreams. But if you don't have a plan, it's never going to happen. And if you certainly even have a plan and you don't do anything, then that dream is futile as well. So where does your journey take you, is the larger question, even outside of Bema. You have to open the door to your future, because you're going to spend the rest of your life there. That sounds a bit corny, but it is true. And a life of significance you can really gain if you're healthy, and you have the time available to do the things you love. The wealth here for me is really the time available to do the things you love. Because obviously you need some money for some of it, uh, but you must also want to do it. You must have your dream locked in that wealth as well, all your values. And here at Bema Africa, under my leadership, we want to help people develop. We want them to develop personally, but also their business. And obviously, we want them to be healthy, have vitality, and be able to do things. Because otherwise, you can't do any of these things that go before. Every dream must have a plan. But a plan must also have action, as I said already. You know, the only financial freedom that you really have, maybe it's not the right word to say freedom, control, is having your own business. Now you say, whoa, it is much more secure to be employed and have a regular check. Well, 
That might have been correct 40 years ago, maybe even 30 years ago, but it is becoming less and less and less so. Especially in a country like South Africa, um, where you cannot rely on the government to give you something, um, possibly if you're from a specific section of the population, then the government might help you. But the best thing is to start your own business. And it's not just about money. Money um, is one of those things that many people have a disdain for. No, money is neutral. Money isn't evil. Money isn't good. But the way we use money and the way we get money, that may be good or evil. And just as an aside, if there's one observation I make with my 62 years, and I don't mean that cynically or what, but uh, there is just no limit to human greed. You can see that in every field, in every human endeavor, be it in overfishing and cutting down the Amazon uh, forests and um, just cheating on every corner and embezzlement and corruption. It's all human greed. And it's all for money. It's actually ridiculous. But it's all about mindset. You see, mindset is extremely important and determines if you will be successful in business or not. It's not the only criteria, but it is most definitely the most important one, in my opinion. Now, healthcare means to enable the body's natural self regulation and self healing ability to really come to the fore to really get this body of ours into an optimized state so that it can do what it does best ever since you and I were born. Wealth creation is a little bit different. Wealth creation means that we somehow can get a bank balance of time, and we all only have 24 hours a day, remember? But how do we use that time? We can use some of that time to generate an income. We can use some of that time to travel, some of that time to pursue hobbies. Maybe we do some charity work somewhere in the community. We enjoy um, our leisure time, possibly by reading or listening to music, or spend time with loved ones. I've noticed that uh, my contemporaries, they uh, many times have grandchildren already, and they enjoy being around their grandchildren. And that is what I mean by wealth creation. So I hope you understand me correctly. And you should be able to do this whatever your age. It doesn't matter if you're in your 20s or if you're in your 60s or 70s. Become extraordinary. What's going to stop you? Achieve success, however you define success. And I put that arrow there next to the guy's head because notice the guy's got gray hair. There is no age limit on becoming successful. Um, I heard the other day at the University of Pretoria, there was a graduate, um, a lady actually, she got a PhD and she was 72 years old and it was in a way um, on her bucket list. But you've got to do this in a harmonious way, in an integrated way, in a balanced way. It's no good you become a very filthy rich person but your family leaves you in the process. You've got only enemies and no more friends. What's the point? But the person responsible for all these things to happen or not to happen is you or me. We've got to fly like an eagle. We've got to get out of the ordinary humdrum. And an employment job actually cradles you into a false sense of security pays you little, a l relatively little per hour. If you take your salary and you um, have a look um, for how many hours you work and you find out how many rand you actually get per hour, you'll be shocked. And you know you have much more potential than that. Also, you've got to get out of negativity. If you want to start a business, you know what's interesting? Your closest relatives often tell you it's never going to work. You must take something and, uh, of course, you've got to judiciously look at all angles and then say, okay, what is the risk here? Is it a big risk? Is it a small risk? Is it an acceptable risk? Am I risking the farm and the family in this? Or is this something I could do? 
But more important even is follow your vision and your passion. That is absolutely paramount. But then once you have that, you must also make a real solid written plan. And then you must action it. Having a plan, there are many people who've got a plan. Well, there are many more people who don't have any plan whatsoever, not for their future, not for their business, not for their families, not for anything. But if you don't have a plan, you're just a piece of driftwood. And if you have a plan and you don't do anything, it'll always be a dream that will never be realized. I once heard that saying that a graveyard is the richest source of unfulfilled dreams. So don't be a turkey. Be an eagle. Break out of this employment trap. Why am I so much against the employment trap? Ach, against employment. I'm not really against employment. You just have to make an assessment if you cannot do much better in terms of your own potential and your own development when you work for yourself. And through the BEMA, I want to give you an opportunity to work for yourself, which is better than any employment. But more about that on another occasion. You've got to seize the opportunity when it presents itself. Some of you might know this little diagram from the BEMA. I've, I've used this iceberg model also for this presentation, but in a different context. Living means, for most people, or many people, a lot of pain. And I would venture to say that that pain comes from poor thinking, having no plans, and only haphazardly and inconsistently doing something. Let me show you. Everyone gets born with immense potential. And very few people, if any, ever develop their lives in such a way that all their potential is coming out. So there is unnurtured development in you and me. You know, when I matriculated, I had an F in mathematics. I wanted to do engineering and every told, everybody told me that's impossible. And once I started studying engineering, it took me six months to get a C, and it took me another six months to get a straight A, and I stayed there. Why? Because I had the potential, but it was invisible completely. But I was very keen, because of my mindset uh, and because of my attitude, to get there. And this is what happens. If we have the right mindset, it will also give us a certain perspective on life. It will give us a certain perspective on everything. I mean, let's face it. Have you ever seen people die in a hospital bed that have an eternity perspective? That they die very differently to people who have nothing to hope for in the afterlife. Nothing. Nothing at all. They are just random, naturally collated elements that became a person. And then they die and they decompose, and that was it. But people with an eternity, eternity perspective have a totally different attitude to even dying. Now, that's maybe a very crass example, but perspective gives you attitude. The attitude to mathematics changed when somebody told me I would never be able to make it. The attitude influenced my immediate behavior. Because if I have a positive attitude towards a topic, a subject, a person, a circumstance, then my behavior will be different when I have a bad attitude to that. And of course, we got to have some balance. One cannot just go out on the limb on one thing. You've got to have balance. And especially those of us who are married, who've got children, responsibilities, and so on, going out on your own business you have to keep the balance. And the balance is more than just the business and the family. It is your general fitness, your activity with friends, your activity in terms of social contact, of going to the theater possibly, of following your other hobbies and passions. You've got to have a balance. If you love reading, don't ignore it after this. And of course, for all these things, we need energy. And that is true, an energy you can only have when you're healthy. 
Those of you who know about the Bema know that uh, our cells all generate ATP, and that is the energy we live by. It's a chemical. And this energy has got to be there. So even if you have the right attitude and behavior, and you even find balance, but you haven't got any energy because you're continuously and chronically tired and fatigued and exhausted, then you won't be able to achieve anything either. But the results will be determined by this, and that's why I put it above the waterline, as you can see. And we will have positive results, or bad results, or no results, depending on our thinking, our plans that we have made and put into action, because that will determine where we will end up in the future. And remember, the future starts after this webinar already. Now, the Bema Academy is a platform where we would like to help all those people who want to start a business with the Bema, the Bema Business Development, so that they can help themselves and others for proper health maintenance and regaining their health if they lost some of it. And that will help a long way to personal development. And this Bema Academy started in Germany, in Hindelang, a small place in the foothills of the Alps. It's an international forum for sharing, caring, learning and action with respect to Bema, so that we can learn about the Bema, what the Bema can do, how it can help other people, how we can um, ourselves start a business with the Bema. And this Bema Academy is visited by people from Germany, Switzerland, Austria, USA, South Africa, Finland, Hungary. Or rather, should I say that this forum exists in these various countries. So the USA has its own Bema Academy, so does South Africa, and so does Finland and Hungary and other nations where the Bema is quite popular. And this represents a very unique Bema Business Development Forum. And it is really worth your while if you listening and you should want to know more about the Bema or you have a Bema already or you are a BBP already, make use of this forum. Because it is a meeting place for the business of life. It combines health and wealth. It combines uh, your own personal development, your development of good health and maintaining good health together with a an income and you decide how many hours you work and what you're going to do and how you're going to do it but what we talk about at this business bema business forum is always professional relevant practical balanced dynamic challenging exciting and sometimes we're a bit creative this is apparently the chinese expression for crisis and a crisis always besides its negative uh, impact, also creates an opportunity. A crisis always challenges, and some people rise to the challenge and see an opportunity. Why do I put this here in this context? Many people say, well, the economy is very poor, people haven't got money, this, that, and the other. And yet it creates an opportunity for you and me to build a business based on the Bema because people still get sick. And people lose their houses and their personal um, wealth, their financial wealth, because they have to spend it all. So Bema creates an opportunity here for people that are possibly made redundant or have lost their jobs for other reason, or find it very difficult to make ends meet. The whole commission structure, the whole marketing plan of Bema is excellent. And Bema then provides health to you or to you to the user whoever that may be and wealth as well and bema in the final analysis creates real quality of life that these things that we would love to do that we're passionate about um the bema will enable us to do it first of all because we will have the physical energy to do it because we're healthy and we have good vitality and also uh, because we have an income which can sustain us materially. We at Bema believe that maintaining our good health should always be a priority because it is the absolute basis of all our pursuits, 
all our pursuits come to naught if we cannot maintain good health. And I'm sure you agree with that one. Let me also say it again, you've heard it in many webinars, the Beamer device heals nothing. And you might say, wow, but that's quite a statement if you haven't heard it before. Well, it doesn't heal anything, but it does something else. The basics of the human body and most organisms, warm-blooded mammals definitely, the human organism in, in the basic analysis is a self-regulating entity. It regulates our own blood pressure, cholesterol levels, body temperature, uh, digestion, all sorts of things, hormone household, it's all self-regulated. It is very networked, which just means that if there's something wrong with your big toe, your brain knows about it, your whole body knows about it, and it will affect you. It's networked in another sense that things like blood pressure are controlled by so many parts in the body that it is actually difficult to um, put your finger on one switch with which you can put up or down the blood pressure level. But the body knows exactly how the combination of all these dials and switches has to work to make your blood pressure what we call normal. And of course, the body is also optimizing. Uh, it's an optimizing system because it optimizes us for life, for living, for being active, for being healthy. And we're not talking of genetic um, ailments now and so on, uh, or serious injury to, to accidents and so on. But the body will always try to keep us in a good, healthy state. And then the final uh, point here, uh, what is most amazing, and that is why the Bema isn't the healing agent, this body is self-healing. The whole medical industry exists to enable the body to heal faster, to heal more effectively. And that medication and whatever will make the body more efficient in regaining our vitality and physical and mental performance. And it is thus a self-healing entity. And that's why we cannot claim that the Bema heals anything, when in fact it doesn't. But the Bema certainly has a couple of aspects which enables the body to self-regulate and self-heal its various organs uh, and tissue and cells actually to work together properly. And the key word is really the cells and all the biology and the chemistry that is going on at this very, very low cellular level, which is anything but simple. You know, 30, 40, 50 years ago, people thought the simple cell and they called it that. Now, when they look at the diagrams, like these few examples I put there on the slide, it is an extremely complex process. It has to function with an accuracy which is mind-boggling. And if it doesn't function properly, there is an immune system in your body that is meant to pick it up and uh, eradicate that cell or possibly even correct the malfunction. For all these things, the body requires energy. And in an ingenious design, the oxygen that we breathe in and the food that we eat gets converted to um, easily, let me say, digestible at cellular level glucose or sugars. And the oxygen and those sugars together produce a molecule called ATP, adenosine triphosphate. And this ATP is what keeps all these cells alive, alive what keeps all these, they keep all these um, functions going and enable the body to be self-regulating and self-healing. And this energy production is about equivalent to the body weight in ATP every single day, day in, day out. And of course, I'm putting this very, very simply. Believe me, I've read on this molecular um, biology machine, and it is absolutely mind-boggling that something like that exists trillions and trillions of times in your body, and that energy gets produced with a re reliability that puts our electricity utilities to shame. 
So we require energy, and to generate this chemical energy at cellular level, we require oxygen, nutrition, we require water. It's very essential as we exist, or consist rather, uh, two-thirds of water. It also requires waste removal at cellular level. It requires a good blood circulation, and the blood itself is, of course, mainly water. And by the way, it's very humbling, but our brains consist 98% of water. But what a package. Uh, we require an alert immune system, and we require an effective and efficient immune system. This all sounds very simple. And the way I've put it here, it is very simple. Obviously, a medical practitioner who studied six, seven years has to learn a lot more. But at the highest level, this is what really happens. And it is profound. How do we require this energy? Well, as I alluded to it already, the blood circulation is the highway that brings the supplies and removes the waste from the cell. The cellular metabolism is supply of oxygen and nutrients and waste product removal. It is the highway also for the immune system because the little white blood particles that run in this blood system are sniffing out any enemies like viruses, bacteria, or malfunctioning cellular um, or cells, malfunctioning, dysfunctioning cells somewhere in the organs and the tissue. So the proper blood diffusion is of paramount importance. And it doesn't stop there. Most of the blood circulation system is really smaller than a fifth of a millimeter. So there I just drew up uh, a millimeter, showed a millimeter, and a fifth of that is the beginning of the small blood vessel system. And 75% of all our blood vessels are of a diameter between 0.2 of a millimeter and 0.005 of a millimeter. So that is really tiny. That is really tiny. And just to show you how tiny it is, that these um, blood vessels, these capillaries, the very smallest ones, who are about five thousandths of a millimeter in diameter, in the point of a ballpoint pen, you would find three to five thousand capillaries in there, in your tissue, in my tissue. And the stimulation of this microcirculation is very, very important for the self-regulation and the self-healing. And you know, this very complex process that we can't go into now tonight is really as easy as lying down, sorry, to stimulate this, and it needs stimulation because as we get older, um, this is not functioning so well anymore, not because of the biology per se, because of aging. No, it is mainly because of our lifestyle. But it is as easy as lying down on these mats, switching it on. Now, what could be nicer? No negative side effects, excellent for home treatment, easy to use. You cannot overdose. You cannot even use the wrong settings. You could use a setting that is not as effective as another one. But every single setting that you put the Bema on, be it too high or too low, will still have a positive effect. Um, but we have, of course, more optimum uh, levels for various conditions. But we're not going to discuss that here tonight. The Institute for Microcirculation did a lot of tests, and they found out before Bema, a certain bit of tissue looks like this. And after two minutes of Bema already, the circulation parameters look very different. Now, the question arises very quickly, but whoa, if we stimulate the microcirculation in the whole body simultaneously, we have so many pipes running open that we wouldn't have enough blood to fill them all. That's correct. But the, the body is much smarter than, than we think because the body will accept the Bema signal, but only in those areas that it wants to diffuse with more blood. And that depends on the particular activity we are engaged in. So if there's a lot of thinking, then it'll go to the brain. If you've just eaten a big meal, it'll go to your stomach. If you're preparing for a tennis match, it will go into your muscles.
get my drift. So closed capillaries open after two minutes already. And that is extremely important for all the cells to get supplied on this highway, remember? The capillaries are like the smallest little byways on a map, on a road map. So we've got the interstates and the highways, and they branch off into main roads, and they branch off into uh, smaller secondary roads, and then into tertiary roads, and then just little footpaths, okay? And they open up. And look at the white blood cell there is, uh, sticking to the left side. Um, before a BEMA application, we have an odd one. After BEMA application, we have a lot. And the implication of this picture is we have a much better chance of the immune system doing its work, meaning it will be able to eradicate or get hold of possibly viruses, bacteria, and dysfunctioning cells. And the following is really the one slide that explains in one simple little picture what the BEMA actually does. To really get that self-regulation and self-healing effect going, we need very good microcirculation because that would improve the supply and removal mechanism at cellular level. That's understandable. If we have that done and it works well, then the improved energy production, in other words, ATP production from nutrients or glucose and uh, the oxygen, will produce more energy, more ATP, and that in turn will make sure that the chemistry at cellular level is working the way it's meant to work. And if that should be true for all or most cells in all the organs and all the tissues, from the brain to the kidney to the pancreas to the big toe, then we have a properly functioning regulation process. And by that we mean all the regulation processes in these complicated um, algorithms that I just showed you one or two diagrams that show what all has to happen in, for example, the liver, or when a blood has to coagulate when there is a wound, or all these processes that the body is actually autonomously self-regulating and when that is all functioning we have something that we generally and casually call health and it works for all ages this bema is independent of the age of the person that is lying on it and there are so many ailments that can be affected why not because the bema heals those ailments not at all the BEMA enables the body to get its self-regulation, self-healing processes back into order, and then it can tackle just about anything better from arthritis to rheumatism to diabetes 2 to a burn wound to a headache to this, that, or the other. And you know, it may be anecdotal, but we got lots of evidence with a million applications worldwide every single day. And you know, it's not a placebo effect. It's not a matter of, I believe in it, so it'll work. No, no, no. It works extremely well on horses, on cats and dogs, and other animals. And you know, I might be able to talk something into your heads and you into mine, but I don't think I can talk anything into a horse's head. And the success rate of the BEMA treatment is really good. I want you to just focus on the orange bars here. What we are saying on the vertical axis is the percentage of improvement of a particular condition and the duration of treatment and compliance here is very important. It is no good trying to use the BEMA uh, whenever I feel like it, you know, once every two weeks and then after three applications I expect wonders. No, no, no. You've got to use it every single day. And what you will find is that your complaint in some people goes away very quickly. Um, in others, it takes a bit longer, but you see this curve is a pretty steep one. And after six weeks, we already have a 70% chance that the ailment is gone. Not because the BEMA healed it, please hear me right, but because the BEMA enabled the body to tackle that particular problem successfully with all the resources at its um, disposal. And there's no doubt. Our, price, our health is priceless, 
Our health is our responsibility, is not the doctors, it's not the hospitals, it's not even Virgin Active to keep you fit. Your health is your problem. My health is my problem. Our health can be regained, it can be maintained by natural means. Not in every case. I'm not saying we don't need hospitals. I don't say we don't need drugs. I don't say we don't need medical doctors. Not at all. The Bema is just another modality in enabling the body to sort out its own problems. But you got to take charge of your health and you got to take charge of your life. And there we come again to the health and the wealth. Because having health alone is good, is fine. And you can be very happy without anything else. But I think the happiness comes when you mix with your friends, when you mix with your loved ones, when you interact with other people, when you share stories. When we look at the Bema, it is quite unique. At this moment in the market, because it is protected by patents, the Bema has no real competitors out there. No matter what people say, no matter what some stupid websites claim, before you buy a Bema, read this, and then they really fill your head with real rubbish. You know why they, why they single out the Bema in their argument and not the other 20 worthless devices that there are? Because they admire the Bema. It's the only one that really works, and we know why it works and what it does and what it doesn't do. While others make claims on, on healing, we say, no, the Bema doesn't heal. It enables the body through microcirculation, energy production, and self-regulation to heal itself better. That's not so difficult to understand, is it? But now we must all think what we want to do and where we want to be in the future. So you got to make a decision tonight or some other night. But, you know, um, grab the opportunity today. Decide. Be a BEMA business leader. Move from ordinary to extraordinary. It's not easy. Nothing is easy that is worthwhile. But if you've got the right mindset, you have a little bit of courage, and you have a willingness, and you have a bit of ability, and we provide all the training for you, you can move from ordinary to extraordinary. Go for it. Achieve extraordinary success in your own BEMA business. Become a BBP. Live a life of significance. Why is that significant? Well, you're helping others. And you can actually live of that. Isn't that amazing? And I tell you what, if you work four hours every single day as a BBP, according to a plan, which we have elucidated on other occasions, then you will earn more income than just about any employment you might have at the moment. And just don't think for a moment that your employment is secure. But working for yourself only depends on you. But most people limit their wealth as well as their health by choice. I'm as guilty as the next guy. I'm not just preaching here. Um, it is my choice also sometimes to eat something which I shouldn't eat. To do less exercise than I should. To limit my wealth because I feel lazy today and I'd rather vegetate in front of the TV. It's a choice we make, that you make, that I make. And lifestyle is determined by ourselves. And so in the end, we sit there out on a limb and we're digging holes in the sand for what? Or we just have a lot of pain because of our lifestyle. You know, 96% of any Western nation represent the terminally short of cash. Do you hear that? You hear that? Almost 100%, no, not 100%, obviously not. But almost the whole nation is short of cash. And where's terminally? Every month. Now you will determine your financial future as well as fulfilling your potential. When are you gonna get started? being one of the 4% that really live life abundantly. And you can live life abundantly. Um, just become one of the 4%. No, why 4%? The 4% just happens to be a number. It could be 5% or 8%. Who cares? What you have to do is make a decision 
Do you want to get up and do something, become a BBP, help others, and in the process derive purpose, joy, and an income? It's a no-brainer, really, especially with a product like the Bima. Now, but the person responsible for this to happen is you and me. I include myself. So break out of the poor health, poor wealth trap. You don't need to be there. Seize the opportunity. Do it now. Why don't you just phone me tomorrow morning, if you want to, in South Africa, and uh, tell me what you're going to do with your Beamer business if you are a BBP already. Or if you want to become a BBP, then phone me or somebody that you know who is a BBP and let them tell you. Because I can obviously not handle everybody. So please, the first 10,000, uh, just be patient. You know, life is an exciting story. It's very exciting. But you've got to experience it. And you know what is so sad? As I get older and I look around at my contemporaries and I look in their eyes, I often see they're dead already. They're just not buried yet. And you know why they're dead? They don't have anything exciting to do anymore. They don't dream. They don't plan. They don't do anything. That's very sad. But I think if we can live life abundantly with good health and again, with wealth, which implies being able to do, to do what we would like to do and earning an income at the same time, that is the experience we can have as a successful, extraordinary BBP. And there is not one BBP in South Africa that is already registered that couldn't be that extraordinary, successful BBP. Again, the capital required is mindset. It is willingness, ability, it is courage, and it is a bias for action.